जय राधा माधव जय कुंज भी हरि जय राध माधव जय कुंज भी हरि जय गोपी जन्न वल्लाह भान जय गिरिवर धारी ई जय गोपी जन वल्लाभ जय गिरिवर धारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ जय गिरिवर धारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ जय गिरिवर धारी यशोधनंदन ब्रजजनरंजना यशोधनंदन ब्रजजनरंजना यशोधनंदन ब्रजजनरंजना यशोधनं ब्रजजनरंजना यमुनतीरवन चारी अमुनतीरवन यमुनतीरवन चारी यमुन तीर वन च जय राधा माधव जय कुंज भी हारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज भी हारी जय गोपी जन वल्लह भय गिरिवर धारी जय गोपी जन वल्लह भिरिवर धारी यशोधनंदन ब्रजजनरंजना यशोधनंदन ब्रजजनरंजना यशोधनंदन ब्रजजनरंजना यशोधनंदन ब्रजजनरंजना नंदन ब्रज जनर यशोधनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यशोधनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन ओ यशोधनंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यमुन तीरावन चारी वन यमुनती रामन चारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज भी हारी जय राधा माधव जय कुंज भी हारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 
कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Welcome everyone. I'm seeing all of you after a couple of weeks. Can you all hear me okay? Okay. Um we're just officially going to start our summer, right? July is the upcoming month. I think last week um Kanai Gopal Prabhu spoke about the seasons, how the seasons change and uh, um you know, happiness and distress is part of our lives according to changing seasons and we should be ready to embrace it and uh, we will continue on the similar theme today um but before we get started and everybody can see the screen increase the font for those of you who uh, are unable to see is that okay too many seasons have already passed a little bit more okay all right uh let's see is that okay all right so let's start with prayers mangala charan om gyan trimardandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun melitam yena tasmay shri guruve namaha shri chaitanya manobhishtam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadamayam dadati swapadantikam वंदे हम श्री गुरु श्री युता पद कमल श्री गुरुन वैष्णवांश श्री रूप सागर जाता सह घना रघुनाथान्वता सजीव साधुवैत सवदूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पदान सह घना ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते ताप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंचकुभ्या कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री आद्वैता गदाधार शिवा सारी गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे ओके सो वी रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवत गीता एंड द वर्स दैट वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग टुडे इज फ्रॉम चैप्टर सेवन 
verse number two. So kindly repeat after me. Jnanam teham sa vijnanam Idam vaksham sheshataha Yagnatva neha bhuyognyaj Jnatva yam avishishishate Jnanam teham sa vijnanam Idam vakshamya sheshataha Yagyatva neha bhuyo yaj Yatma yam avishishyate Jnanam teham sa vijnanam Idam vakshamya sheshataha Yagnatva neha bhuyo nyaj Nyatva yam avashishyate Jnanam, phenomenal knowledge Te, unto you Aham, I Sa, vid Vijnanam, numinous knowledge Idam, this. Vakshyami shall explain. Asheshataha, in full. Yat, which. Nyatva, knowing. Na, not. Iha, in this world. Bhuya, further. Anyat, anything more. Nyatvayam, knowable. Avashishyate, remains. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada. Shila Prabhupada ki. Anybody can read translation? Yes, go ahead. I shall now declare unto you in full this knowledge, both phenomenal and numinous. This being known, nothing further shall remain for you to know. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Complete knowledge includes knowledge of the phenomenal world, the spirit behind it, and the source of both of them. This is transcendental knowledge. The Lord wants to explain the above-mentioned system of knowledge because Arjuna is Krishna's confidential devotee and friend. In the beginning of the fourth chapter, this explanation was given by the Lord, and it is again confirmed here. Complete knowledge can be achieved only by the devotee of the Lord in disciplic succession directly from the Lord. Therefore, one should be intelligent enough to know the source of all knowledge, who is the cause of all causes, and the only object for meditation in all types of yoga practice. When the cause of all causes becomes known, then everything knowable becomes known, and nothing remains unknown. The Vedas, Mukunda Upanishad says, Kasmin u bhagavo vignate sarvam idam vignatam bhavatiti. So, as I mentioned earlier, that um, we are continuing with seasons, the, the theme of happiness and distress. Krishna speaks uh, extensively with Arjuna in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, where there is about to, there is a war that's about to start, and it is going to be cause of a lot of misery for a lot of people. And we're reading from this chapter called The Knowledge of the Absolute. And here Krishna is making a profound and absolute claim. And that, that the teachings of Bhagavad Gita explain everything which is eternal and it is temporary. Just like the happiness and distress as you heard from Kanai Gopal Prabhu last week. And, what, and he says that whatever is to be known 
within this universe and beyond is being taught by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. And that is what is described in the sacred pages of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna explains in um, Bhagavad Gita, Raja Vidyam, Raja Guhyam, Pavitram Idam Uttamam, Pratyaksha Vagamam Dharmayam, Susukham Kartum Avyayam, in the ninth chapter. And he's explaining that this knowledge, this is the king of all education. And it is the most confidential wisdom. Why? Why is he saying that? You all can come closer. Why is, why is Krishna saying that this is the most confidential wisdom and this is the king of all knowledge? Ah. Very nice. So we, because of this knowledge, we understand what our constitutional position, what we are supposed to do, and not everybody is able to under, understand. What else? Ah. Satisfaction in what sense? Inner satisfaction, inner joy, inter eternal happiness. Yes, wonderful. So that is exactly uh, the understanding of this particular verse, Rajaguya, right? So because by understanding these teachings, we can have a direct perception um, of the self, who we are, what is our constitutional position, what we are supposed to do, and how do we attain this eternal inner peace, eternal inner joy. And we see there are so many different forms of education in this world. We send our children to elementary school. Some of the children in this room, they go to elementary school. Some are going to high school. Some are graduating from high school and going to colleges. Some are graduating from universities, getting higher degrees. And then you go to jobs, you have titles, so, so on and so forth, right? But Krishna explains that this information of Gita is the king of knowledge. Because it describes the truth. It describes the truth. In our material educational systems, we are taught and it is explained to us in many different ways by which, you know, through our mind, through our bodies, how we can manipulate all this material energy. And what do we do by manipulating all this material energy? We make more money. We acquire more material things. We become more prestigious. We become more famous by our activities, by our work. Hmm? But then, none of these things can bring about the understanding of the absolute truth. Nor, that, nor any of these things can give us real eternal happiness. Why? It is temporary. right? Because we must first understand that what is real happiness? Yes? And in, yes, somebody said, who said that? Satchidananda. In order to understand the, what is happiness, we must first understand who we are. And that is the basic principle of Bhagavad Gita, correct? That who we are. Are we this body? We're not this body, right? We're not made up of this material nature that is around us. Hmm? We are living in this body, but who we really are. We, you know, many, many years ago, I was in um, um, Hartford Temple, and Srila Indadumna Maharaj was giving a class, and he quotes an example. And he says, um, we often introduce ourselves, and if we go to a doctor, then we say, we have a problem. He says, what is the problem? Oh, my ear is hurting, right? My ear is hurting or my eyes are hurting or there's a problem with my, this limb or that limb, yes? But then, if everything is my ear, my nose, my eyes, my belly, my hand, who are you? You're, you're something other than the my, 
Yes? But who am I? Yes? So just, just like when we are driving a car, it is solving a, it's a, solving a particular purpose for us when we are driving a car. Hmm? Um, probably it is a very important purpose because you all can come to the temple. You can take darshan of Shishi Radha Kunj Bihari, Shishi Jagannath Baldev Subhadra Mai and Gaur Nithai. And to get to, from your home or wherever you are to the temple, what does the car need? Gas and driver and, <laughs> and maintenance. If you don't do the maintenance, the car will break down. So you have some engine oil. But does your driver can run on the gas and the engine oil? It cannot. Those are the needs of the car. They are not the needs of the driver. Similarly, the driver of the body is who? The soul. So if I feed my soul, and don't please don't try this, if I drink some gasoline or engine oil, I potentially will either die or I will get really, really sick. Yes? So similarly, we're trying to give pleasure to ourselves by giving enjoyment to the, to the body and the mind, by playing with the material nature, the energies of the material nature. Hmm? And that is just similar to giving that gas to the driver of the car or the engine oil to the driver of the car. Yes? In the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Dehino smin yatha dehe kaumaram yavanam jara tata dehantara praptir dhiras tatra na muyati. That the eternal soul, the Atma, which is the true person of our existence, is traveling through various stages of the body, body's development. And we witness this. We see how our children are born, then the soul, which is part of, in, in the body, is passing through the childhood, the youth, the middle ages, the old ages, and ultimately there is what? The death. Hmm? And then later on in the second chapter, um, Krishna is like speaking to Arjuna and he's saying, Vasham shijarnani yatha vihaya navani grinati naroparani tatha sharirani vihaya jarnani anyani samyati navani dehi. So just like we take off our clothes and we change into another set of clothes. At the moment of death, the soul changes bodies. Hmm? Then there is another famous verse. The second chapter is full of these wonderful verses. Na jayate mriyate va kadachan. Nayam bhutva bhavitavana bhuya. But Krishna declares that for the soul, there is no such thing as birth and there is no such thing as death. The soul, is, the soul is eternal, it is transcendental, hmm? and which is part and parcel of the Paramatma in our heart. Hmm? And Gita declares that the greatest ignorance for us is to think yourself as the enjoyer of this body. Hmm? He says that the, Krishna says that the non-permanent pleasures that come to the body are the sources of all misery because they have a beginning and they have an end. Hmm? And they give no pleasure to the soul, just like the gasoline to the driver. Yes? So the most fundamental, essential teaching is the basis of all spiritual development for us to understand who we are. Unless we realize that we are not this body and we don't stop trying to enjoy through the, through the body, we are not going to give any nourishment to the soul. And if we don't give that spiritual nourishment to the soul, there is no question of understanding that there is any higher realm of spiritual philosophy for us. Hmm? Then we live in illusion. And an illusion that if we remain in the matrix, everyone has seen the movie Matrix, younger ones probably have not. When the Neo stays in the matrix, he doesn't see Morpheus and he doesn't see outside the matrix. It's one of my most favorite movies, a fascinating movie entirely based on Bhagavad Gita. Hmm? Similarly, there is a, there is a story, there's a beautiful story in Srimad Bhagavatam of, um, where Krishna perfectly illustrates 
what he's telling Arjuna in Gita. There was a great king by the name Maharaj Chitraketu. Have you heard of the story of Maharaj Chitraketu? Hmm? He, was, he was young, he was healthy, he was handsome, he was, he was the king. He lived in a beautiful royal palace. Hmm? He had hundreds and thousands of servants. He had millions of soldiers in his army. And they were willing to do whatever he desired. Hmm? And all the citizens of his kingdom loved him. They respected him. He had many, many beautiful wives. Um, they, they were very charming. They were beautiful. Um, he had a lot of wealth and gold. No one in this world compares to what Maharaj Chitraketu had. Not even Elon Musk. Hmm? But after having all this, he was terribly suffering. And that is, our, that is our position also. We might have so many things in our life, but we all have some or other kind of suffering. That is the nature of the material world. No matter how much we acquire, if one small little thing goes wrong in our life, everything becomes miserable. We cannot stop thinking about it until that problem is gone away. We all have experienced this. No matter what you do, it doesn't matter. That problem, as long as it stays, we are suffering. There is misery. And there are three kinds of miseries, Krishna tells us in Bhagavad Gita, that come upon this body and mind at any moment. What are those three? Those of you who have read. Yes. Yes. So, Adhyatmika, Adi Bhautika, and... Adi Devika. Hmm. So, Adhyatmika, as Mataji mentioned, are the miseries that are caused by one's own body and mind. I know, when I was growing up, just like other children who are into music, I was also very much into music, learning music while I was young. And I also had role models at that time, you know. So, one of those was Michael Jackson. Yeah. And you know, there are so many examples of different celebrities, you know, rich and famous people just like Michael Jackson, who, who died young, at a very young age, because of the miseries of body and mind. Michael Jackson was 40, 50 years old. Whitney Houston was 48 years old. Heath Ledger, you know, the, what is that movie, Batman movie? And he was the Joker, the original Joker in that movie. You know, he was 28 years old. Alexander the Great, he was 32 years old. What, what did these people not have? They had all the wealth of the world. Alexander, he conquered the, practically the entire world. What were his last words? When you bury my body, don't build any monument on top of my body. Just keep my two hands out. Just like we raise our hands for the mercy of the Lord. He said, keep my two hands outside so the world knows that the person who won the entire world had nothing in his hand when he left. That is our position. We came with nothing, we will leave with nothing. Another one of these great rich men, uh, you might have heard, those who have been here for a while, were Rockefellers. Hmm? Rockefellers had many sons, and one of his sons died. He was eaten alive by cannibals. Have you heard this story? You know, he was, he was doing a sociological study to get his PhD. Caution those who are doing PhD. He went to an island somewhere. He did not know there were cannibals living on that island. And, you know, he, he ended up dying. So, his father, he said, it doesn't matter how much the world has given me, how much wealth I have accumulated, how much my forefathers have given me, it can give me no pleasure anymore because my young son is dead. And that is Adhyatmika. Hmm? That whoever you are, whatever you are, whatever you have accomplished in this life, at any moment, the miseries of body and mind can spoil everything for us. And then there is Adhibhotika. Right? The miseries that are caused by other living beings upon us. Sometimes, you know, 
somebody can cause physical harm to us sometimes you know somebody insults us that's very painful especially if you have been honored in the past and then you are dishonored oh my god that is the worst thing that can happen how dare this person say something like this about me i cannot believe you know i thought i trusted this person then they could say such thing about me behind my back hmm? then we are even more miserable then when we find out somebody said something behind my back but that is the nature of material existence adi bhautika and at any moment someone can come into your life and create this terrible suffering for us and then there is adi devika just like few days ago in texas there was this tornado out of nowhere and so many people died many were injured hmm? but these powers which are beyond our control beyond human ability to control anything and the floods sometimes there are earthquakes sometimes there are famines there's so much suffering and misery krishna explains in gita mam upetya punar janma dukhalayam ashashvatam let's not try to make this material world a place for your happiness because it's a place where misery can strike at any moment and any happiness you create like prabhu was talking last week it is temporary the happiness and distress are a part of the nature of our material existence volcanoes earthquakes excessive heat we live in texas excessive cold we live in texas we have experienced both <laughs> we don't have to look at east coast anymore over the last few years we have experienced everything the ice storms the snow storms the hail storms you know we have ex- we have experienced everything we we used to think we don't we would visit colorado mountains to experience snow we experienced utah in the middle of may where we were serving prasadam during sadhu sangha last year and there was a hail storm and then then there, there was a snowfall in the middle of may so in this way you know every conditioned being is subjected to these threefold miseries of the material nature so maharaj chitraketu he had everything but he was miserable so one day a great sadhu came angira rishi he came to his palace maharaj chitraketu was being very cultured and a religious man um he immediately you know honored him he he had him sit um on his you know on his throne not you know angira rishi you know what is his position he's a he's a sanyasi he's a sage he's traveling and wandering uh, around the world he's giving the message of god consciousness he's you know whenever he gets food he will he will honor the prasadam wearing simple clothes he did not need any of that but mara chitraketu just because he was very cultured he understood the position of someone like angira rishi he sat him down on his throne he was washing his feet sitting down near his lotus feet and with great humility he bowed his head down to the ground hmm? now angira rishi was very advanced self realized he could see that mara Chitra- chitraketu was not happy so he asked him what's wrong why do you look so sad you have everything you still look so sad please tell me so mara chitraketu said i have everything but i do not have a son i have so many wives but i cannot get a son he used an example like just as a person who is starving for hunger and and water if that person was to walk in if it was you and i was to say hey i have this beautiful garland i'm going to give it to you you're going to say please you keep the garland i'm hungry i i need water i need food hmm? so same way mara chitraketu explained to angira rishi that i have everything but i don't have a son and i'm miserable and angira rishi was very you know very merciful and he said you think this is the reason you're miserable all right if you think this is the reason you're miserable after having everything you have then by with my blessings and my powers i will arrange for you to have a son 
So Angira Rishi then performed a very large fire sacrifice, a yagna. And from that fire sacrifice, there was a prasadam. That prasadam was sacred food. He gave it to Maharaj Chitraketu and he said, now you take this and you give it to your favorite wife. And when you give it to your favorite wife, as he said, he did, Maharaj Chitraketu did, a little while after, the wife became pregnant and a child was born, a beautiful child. And then Angira Rishi came again and he said, you should name this child as Harsha Shoka. Harsha Shoka. Harsha means what? Happiness. Happiness. That will give you joy. And Shoka means? Distress. Lamentation. See, I, I told you, today our topic is based on what Kanai Gopal Prabhu explained last week. <laughs> Happiness, joy and distress. And lamentation. Yes? So that's sh Shoka means lamentation. So when the son was born, Chitra, Bharat Chitra Kuitu was so happy. He was rejoicing. There were festivals everywhere. The whole kingdom was celebrating and they were singing and they were dancing. The king has a son. He has an ear to the throne. A new prince has been born. And Maharaj Chitra Ketu gave so much charity. His eyes were filled with tears of joy as he looked at Harsha Shoka and this beautiful child. And the mother was overjoyed. She was so infatuated with attachment to this little boy. They were so happy. But, as you know, the nature of the material world, one man's happiness is another man's distress. <laughs> or like you say, one man's food is other man's poison. Hmm? What brings us happiness may bring someone else sorrow. So Chitraketu Maharaj and the entire kingdom was celebrating and especially his principal wife and the queen you know, were very happy. And all the other wives were also celebrating, you know, they were, they were celebrating externally, but internally they were burning with envy, hatred. And that is what we see in the world around us, that more someone has, more people envy them. And why, why does this person have so much? What is he going to do with all this? Huh? And, and those who have it, you know, sometimes they like to show it to others, to impress them. Well, if you notice, you know, very wealthy people, they really don't need all the things they have. They really don't. Sometimes people come across other very successful people and they say, how oh, they are so famous and rich. They have so many opulences. Externally, they might exhibit, oh, they are so happy for this person. But internally, they might think, I wish I had a little bit of this person has. Maybe even just 20%. No, maybe 30%. Then I would be so happy. My life will be so perfect. You know? So, that is how the world is. But one must understand, there is... There is no love in this world on the basis of the material things anybody acquires. No matter how much we have, it will never be enough. So the queens, externally they were all celebrating. Oh, Chit our Prabhu, Chitraketu Maharaj has a wonderful child. They were throwing flowers on this child. And they were celebrating and they were singing and they were dancing. But in their hearts, they were very envious. So they all collectively conspired together to kill this child. So they gave poison to this child. It's a little infant baby. Hmm? That is not a story, Prabhus and Matajis. This is history. This happened. So the queens, they gave poison to this child and he died. Now, you know, Please try to understand, these queens, they were very pious people. It's not like they were, they were, you know, envious people from the get-go. Okay? They were faithful. They were chaste. They were highly cultured queens, ladies. But what happens is when we, we inhabit envy in our hearts towards others, then 
that envy within, it becomes like that fire and that fire that consumes all the good around us, especially our intelligence. And all our good qualities become demoniac. And we see this. I mean, in our own lives, if you think, you know, there are relationships we have, might have had, brothers, sisters, father, son, friends, neighbors. Due to envy, people fight with each other. They become enemies. There's the divorce rates keep going up, hmm? at least in the Western world. Hmm? So this child, you know, he appeared in a very deep sleep. When the nurse came, she's thinking the child is sleeping so nicely. You know, the queen asked the nurse, why don't you wake up my child and bring him to me? So she's waking up the child. Harshashoka, Harshashoka, wake up. We have to go to your mother. Wake up. Harshashoka doesn't move. And then she realizes that there are no signs of life in the body of Harshashoka. The nurse is shocked. She falls unconscious. And as soon as she came back to external consciousness, she starts crying. When the queen hears what has happened and sees the body of Harshashoka, she begins to wail and scream and cry and she fell unconscious. And the news then goes to the king, Maharaj Chitraketu. And as soon as he learns, he starts trying to run. He's in all this pain and misery and he's trying to walk and he's falling and he's walking and he's falling. And when he finally comes to see his, the body of his son, he cannot control himself. He's just totally broken. He, his life is completely destroyed. He can no longer take the position of a king. It, that position doesn't matter to him. And all he could do is lament. So now the news spreads. So Angira Muni, he hears what has happened. So he comes to the, to the kingdom. He comes along with Narad Muni. So he sees the king. And of course the king is completely distraught. The queen is completely distraught. And they see that their son is now dead. So they try to console him by preaching to him that this is the nature of this world. Just like the two grains of sand, they come together in the river and then they're separated by the flow of the water. This is the nature of our relationships with everyone, whether they be husbands, wives, children, friends, countrymen. It doesn't matter what your relationship is. So this understanding is something that is the only refuge from the suffering. So they're trying to, you know, preach to him. They're trying to make him understand that, you know, these things are temporary, including your relationships. We can make so many different arrangements individually, collectively, nationally, internationally to solve the problems of the world. But there is no solution to the problem of four things, birth, Old age, disease, and death. Janma mrityu jara vyadhi, dukha doshanu darshanam. So Krishna says that these are the real problems. Birth, old age, disease, and death. And no matter how many hospitals we construct, no matter how, many medical, how much advanced medical technology we have, and no matter how many armies, no matter how many nations join United Nations and they break away, how many nations join NATO, no matter how many bombs we build to protect our countrymen, still everyone is destined to grow old, get diseased, and die. These, Krishna says, are the real problems of the world, not anything else. We can go to moon again, Mars, Elon Musk wants to go to Mars, Venus, but still, the problems of this world, the real problems of this world, they will remain, remain here, right at home. <laughs> Birth, old age, disease, and death. So what is the solution? Hospitals? Medical technology? Politicians? Armies? 
all these things can be useful to create a temporary you know situation for peace and health and you know getting the getting the world in order does anybody think here the world is in order or it has become better in terms of relationships and envy and um hatefulness that exists over the last 20 years 30 years or do we think it's getting worse it's probably getting worse hmm? so temporary arrangement of peace is okay but it is not an eventual solution for the problem because the ultimately the death is very very violent and to transcend death the spiritual knowledge and realization is the only solution we we can we can have to solve the real problem of the world so in many so in so many ways they were explaining this to mara chitraketu that to the degree that you are attached to anything in this world to that degree we will suffer when it is taken away and we will be just like alexander the great with two hands raised after conquering the world he had nothing yeah so mara chitraketu understood he could realize the the knowledge that he was being imparted upon by angira rishi and narad muni and with great thankfulness in his heart he said maharaj everything you say is true please now instruct me how i can realize these teachings so narad muni in particular gave him a mantra and he said you should chant this mantra which is comprised of the holy names of the lord hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare and he told him you chant this mantra sincerely and you will realize the highest truth some of us saw the video this morning that came from uh, after the sadhu sangha festival that ananta vrindavan created and it's a 11 minute video beautiful video that was shared on our whatsapp group and in that video in the end there are you know small snippets of little testimonials of uh, the devotees why do we chant and everybody has a different realization and what do they get with chanting so this chanting doesn't get old just like the bollywood songs or the other other songs whatever they might be it doesn't it never gets old because this is the transcendental medium to transcend through the modes of material nature something that is eternal so then narad muni addressed harsha shoka harsha shoka is dead so he said harsha shoka you have left your father lamenting and weeping please come back and explain to us so now the spirit of harsha shoka stood up and he began to speak he said i am not harsha shoka i am a jeevatma i am an eternal soul who is my mother who is my father i have transmigrated through 8.4 million species of life i had mothers and fathers as a fish as trees as plants at one time i was an insect i was a reptile i went through all these various species of beasts and animals and birds and so many human forms i've had before so which fa- which father and mother do you want me to address and to be attached to so you see that that was an infant child but the jeevatma is realized we forget when we take a new body so then he says by your supreme will by the by the supreme will of the lord we are all destined to live in a particular place in a particular body for some time and then we must go and krishna explains that in bhagavad gita is the the nature of karma how do we get these different bodies this this material creation he says is consisting of the three modes of material nature what are the three modes of material nature yes rajagun tamagun and satvagun and according to our actions whether they are sinful or pious 
we must accept a particular reaction. That's karma. It is undeniable. It is an irrefutable law. It is better than a, any computer program ever written. I work for IBM and IBM has now this quantum, uh, you know, super processor, which will change the world in the next decade. And it can perform billions of transactions and, and, and of the programs in a second, in a second. But the programs, if, how many of you are programmers in IT in the room? Have your programs always been perfect? They work and then there is a bug. But in the law of karma, there is no bug, my dear friends. No bug. So, it is an irrefutable law that nobody can escape. That is a law of the nature. Just like the law of the nature is gravity. It is very simple. If I ask any of you, if I throw a ball up, is it going to stay up? You're going to say, are you out of your mind? It's going to come down. Because anything that you throw up will come down. Even a child can understand that. Because that is the law of the world. Yes? So, similarly, karma is that for every action, there is an equal and opposite corresponding reaction. We, we cause harm to somebody else, that harm will come back to us. We act sinfully, we must get an equal corresponding misery in our own life. We act piously, whatever good we have done, we will get pleasure for a period of time. Okay? But today, even in our schools and colleges and even in our own homes, I have seen people don't understand, even from you know, our background where we grow up hearing about Krishna um, or the laws of karma or reincarnation, there is you know, either total misunderstanding about the law of karma um, or the laws of nature you know, it's simple. In Manu Samhita, it is stated, you kill an animal to eat it, but you don't know that in killing that animal, you're causing a pain and suffering. Whether you kill it yourself or whether you're part of that conspiracy by paying for the death of that animal and then you consume. Manu Samhita says, you must suffer the same pain that that animal has suffered for which you had a contribution towards. You may say that, I don't believe it. You may as well not believe what goes up and come down. You can, you can cause pain to another. You will suffer. That is the law of karma. You cheat someone, you will be cheated. Either in this life or in the next life. But some people think, how is this possible? I know, I know people who are, you know, in this world, you all also know. Right? The people who are not um, honest, they're crooked, they lie, they cheat, but they're very happy. They're prosperous, they have everything. They might have not gotten those things by right set of activities. And then there are very nice, pious people in the world, they're honest, they're religious, um, but they are suffering. Doesn't make sense, right? Why do good things happen to bad people? Why do bad things happen to good people? If you want to learn more on this topic, you have to come on Saturdays because that's the topic Kanai Gopal Prabhu teaches. <laughs> but this is the limited vision. You know, there is a saying in English, the mills of God, they grind slow but exceedingly fine. Okay? So law of karma is like that. Something that might have been done in the past life and you're reaping rewards of that in this life. Similarly, you must have been done, done all good activities in this life but in the past life you did something and you're suffering because of that in this life. The mills of God, they act slow but extensively fine. Hmm? So, it's a matter of time. Similarly, some people have, might have performed these great, pious, virtuous, religious activities and they are enjoying now. But because of certain things that we get, we get pride also. 
Huh? We get pride. See how pious I am, how successful I am. And then slowly we become sinful. But after all that piety wears out, then the miseries and sufferings will start again. Because of all the other irreligious activities we have performed in the past. We cannot escape that. That is the law of karma. So, whatever little residue of remaining karma come out, and then all of the good pleasures of the world, they will come upon us, and then they will go away. But Krishna explains in Gita that good karma and bad karma, it is all ultimately material, and it will ultimately end in the death. So we must learn to live as per the principles of um, Gita that, ex that teaches us how to transcend the laws of karma, the good karma and the bad karma. We must educate ourselves to understand what is the real goal of life. So Maharaj Chitraketu, upon hearing his son speak like this, upon hearing his son explain that I am simply acting according to the ultimate will of the Lord, Maharaj Chitraketu became very enlightened. And then his son laid down again. And Maharaj Chitraketu then surrendered to the instructions of Angira Muni, Narad Muni, chanted the holy names of the Lord, became completely purified, self-realized, experiencing, experiencing, experiencing the ultimate bliss. The Vedanta Sutras explain Atato Brahma Jigyasa. This human form of life is very rare. And it is exclusively only meant, only meant for realizing the absolute truth, the position of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Srila Prabhupada used to say that uh, whatever we learn, whatever we do in this world is like many, 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 many zeros. No matter how much education we get, how many degrees we get, bachelors, masters, PhDs, doctors, lawyers, no matter how much money we accumulate, no matter how much power one may have, it's all like zeros. Because at the time of death, you have nothing. And death can come at any moment. But, he says, Krishna is like that one. You add one, in front of those zeros, then everything increases the value of your life. Not wealth, the value of your this life and every other life after. It is not, the, it is not that the education is wrong. It is, it is good, provided we understand how are we going to use it in our constitutional position that has been given to us. And that is a basic principle of Gita. Krishna spoke this knowledge to Arjuna. Arjuna was not a sannyasi. He was a householder, just like many of us in this room. He had several wives. He was not a brahmana. He was a warrior. He went to the ashram of Dronacharya, which was like a university, like we go to, and we have been to. He learned so many different subject matters from him. But who else learned the same thing and went to the same university? Duryodhan. Duryodhan learned the same things that Arjuna did at the same college, same university of Dronacharya. But what was so different, different between Duryodhan and Arjuna? Consciousness and of doing what? He did it for whom? Arjuna did it for Krishna. And Duryodhan did it for whom? For himself, for his own selfish purposes. Yes? And what was the result? One suffered a terrible death and one attained an eternal loving relationship with Krishna. Eternal. So, to utilize whatever this world has given us according to our true eternal position is knowledge. That's the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna instructs, keep Keep, to keep him in the center of all the activities that we do. Yat karoshi, yat ashnashi, yat yuhoshi, dadasi, yat. Hmm. So whatever you eat, whatever you offer, 
and give away. Do it as an offering of love to me, not me, Krishna. This is, this is the nature we aspire to. That's our North Star, you know. In, in business world, we, we have our goals. What do we want to achieve this year? When we have um, fall planning, like in my company, we plan for 2024 starting in two months. So we say, what are our goals for next year? And then what is our North Star? North Star is that, okay, we meet our goals, but then above and beyond what we can do. So our North Star is that eternal loving relationship and position with Krishna. Yes? But to get there, we have to perform the activities as Krishna is stating in Bhagavad Gita, to keep him in the center of our consciousness, hmm? to make it our nature. So it is not a second thought. It is the first thought. Yeah? So this is our nature. We are eternally part and parcel of Krishna. We are servants of Krishna. Whether you, you might be a businessman, whether you're a mother, you're a father, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a farmer, you're a teacher, you're a student, no matter what occupation we have, but it's our consciousness that Sri Prabhupada wanted. That's why Prabhupada created this, this society, ISKCON, International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Then and only then our life can be perfect. Krishna says at the end of Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharman Parityaja, Ma Mekam Sharanam Braja, Aham Tuam Sarva Papebhyo, Moksha Shyami Mahasucha. That you abandon all varieties of religious principles and just surrender unto me. What does it mean, surrender unto me? Krishna actually tells what that means also in a verse prior, which is, Man mana bhava mad bhakto, madhyaji mam namaskuru, mam evasyasi satyam te prajitane piyosi me. Always think of me, Krishna says. That's it. That's it. No more. Always think of me, Krishna says. You don't have to do anything else. Just keep him in your thought. Every activity you do, you keep him in your thought and you will see all activities will be perfect. He says, become my devotee. Worship me. Offer me homage. So Arjuna's qualification for understanding Bhagavad Gita was what? Yes, he was Krishna's devotee and a very dear friend. In the fourth chapter, Krishna says a, a verse. What does he call, um, what does he say? Bhakto se me si me sakha cheti. Rahasyam hi etad uttamam. Because Krishna, Arjuna is his dear friend, he can understand how nice it would be if we have a loving relationship with Krishna as a friend as a lover, as a father, as a mother, as a child. As long as we have our own relationship with Krishna, we can understand Krishna. Gita teaches that, that it is only through devotion that Krishna can be understood as he is. The supreme absolute truth does not require higher education degrees. It does not require money. Krishna says, I know everything that's happening in the past, everything that will happen in the future, and I know every living being. In the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, he says, Vedas, Vedas cha sarve aham eva vedyo. I am the compiler of all the Vedas. He's the knower of all the Vedas. He's the goal of the Vedantas. So do we think that by learning hundreds and thousands of verses, we can impress Krishna? No. You think we can be a great philosopher and we will impress Krishna? No. He doesn't need our knowledge. He's a source of all knowledge. It, you, do we think Krishna can be impressed with our wealth? No. He's Lakshmi Pati. He's the Lord and the husband of Lakshmi Devi himself. You think he needs our influence or prestige? No. Just by a glance, he can create and destroy entire cosmic manifestation, hundreds and thousands of universes, just by his breathing. He doesn't need any of these things. But, but he is 
भक्त वत्सल ही इज ऑलवेज हंग्री टू टेस्ट दैट स्वीटनेस ऑफ द लव ऑफ हिज डिवोरीज मदर यशोदा शी वॉज अ गोपी शी वॉज नॉट ए स्कॉलर शी लिव इन अ सिंपल विलेज ऑफ वृंदावन धाम ब्रज भूमि शी वुड चर्न द बर्डर शी वुड क्लीन द फॉट्स शी वॉज हिज मदर एंड शी लवड कृष्णा एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट लव कृष्णा बिकेम लाइक अ डांसिंग पपेट इन हर हैंड्स वेन शी वुड बिकम एंग्री विथ कृष्णा आउट ऑफ हर लव कृष्णा वुड रन अवे दिस इज द सेम कृष्णा फ्रॉम हु expanded as lord narsingha dev and ripped apart hiranyakashipu the demon from whom even indra was scared brahma would not go closer lord shiva would not approach and vayudev would not approach it's the same demon hiranyakashipu lord narsingha dev ripped apart but that krishna the origin of lord narsingha dev was terrified of mother yashoda's anger in with the with the you know mother yashoda's power to make even the supreme personality of god god had a subordinate out of her anger why because of her love her bhakti her devotion you know shri dham was one of the cowherd friends of krishna and he would always wrestle with krishna and every single time he will defeat krishna every single time he would krishna would never win a wrestling match with shri dham how is it that a little cowherd boy defeats the supreme personality of godhead krishna is all powerful he defeated many many big demons but krishna allows himself to be defeated by the love of his devotees and that is the essence of gita so krishna says it is only through pure unalloyed devotion that i can be known that who i am and i can be realized who i am and how one can awake awaken the devotion in our heart one can realize that we are atma part and parcel we are a jivatma of paramatma part and parcel of the supreme personality of godhead so let's take the teachings of bhagavad gita seriously spend our time studying what shila prabhupada has so wonderfully and beautifully explained in his purports because um we have so much time we might think in our life to read realize this knowledge but then we often say when we meet our friends ah, whom i have not seen for a long time time is flying time is flying so fast your kids have grown up yes but at the same time we also we think that oh i have so much time i will read when i'm getting older right now i need to enjoy the material nature i'll finish with a with a small story um one time gorang prabhu had come to california for a preaching tour and he was at a program and he finished a program and um everybody was taking prasadam and as uh, you know some of the some of the attendees were coming to meet with him uh there's this person came he was wearing a tilak and a kanti mala and he came to him he says do you recognize me so goranga prabhu looks at him and he says yes i recognize you you were in iit in my batch and this is almost you know 14 15 years later you know this person was meeting with goranga prabhu and he said i hear you're wearing a tilak you're wearing a kanti mala you know you have a bead bag in your hand what happened because i remember you you were not interested in any of this and he goes um i, I remember i used to come to your you know th- at that time in iit Mo- bombay gorang prabhu used to go to different rooms dorm dorm rooms and you know study gita and and teach from gita to different to the group of small students and the and the and the rule was whoever is chanting at least one round will get prasadam and will come to their 
their room um, and we will do the program. And like that, you know, they, they used to have many programs in the week. Every day of the week, they would study Gita in different rooms of students. But this one person, for a very long time, for many, many months, was only chanting one round. So Gorang Prabhu used to tell him, you know, you know, you should increase the number of rounds you chant and meditate. And, um, you know, like many of other students had already started doing. And he said, you know, with one round, I get prasadam and I get to get all of you to come here. That is more than enough for me. So I'm not going to do anything more than one round. So like that, you know, this, 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 this student was... So then he graduated. He said, then he starts narrating. He says, I graduated and I got a good job uh, in India working for a multinational company and I thought I would be very happy. And he said, after a while, I realized I'm not satisfied. Then somebody told me, you need to go do a PhD because you're so intellectually intelligent, you know, smart. You need to go do a PhD. And I said, okay, then I left my job. I, I went and enrolled in a PhD program and I did my PhD. And I was very happy. But after some time, I started feeling still that dissatisfaction, that emptiness, that this PhD didn't fulfill that same feeling I had. Then somebody said, no, you, you go to America and you go work for this, this company or these few companies. So he said, okay, fine. So then he comes to America and he works for this multinational company in America and he gets his green card and then his, you know, he thinks that I'll be happy. He says, no, he's not very, he's not happy at all. He says, you should get married now. You'll be happy. How many of the Prabhus here feel that they're happy? Everyone. I hope, I hope everyone. So, Mataji, same question. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a sectarian. So, so this person gets married, has children, and he's still not happy. And then he one day comes to a program just like this and hears a class and he gets very inspired. And then he starts chanting and he starts gradually chanting more and more. Sadit starts doing services in the temple and then he gets initiated and is following regulative principles. And then he said, I feel content in service. Service, not just to others, service to the holy name as well by chanting my rounds. So that is the essence of any spiritualist that whatever we learn, we put it into practice. Because if we don't put it into practice, it is an entertainment. We came here, we heard something nice, we think that we spiritually advance ourselves, but after some time, it will go away because the atmosphere around us, the environment around us, the association around us will deviate us from this goal of attaining something higher. That is why Sadhu Sangha is so important. Sadhu Sangha is the like-minded association of individuals that have the same goal. If our goal is to transcend this material nature, the material world, and be with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in His kingdom, Goloka, then we need to sincerely chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, comments? Hare Krishna, let's give another round for Ramaji Prabhu for such a wonderful <laughs> class. Continuing on the theme of uh, what we spoke about with weather and uh, what can I go about Prabhu? <laughs> Thank you.
जय श्री कृष्ण चेतनिया प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौर भक्त जय श्री कृष्ण चेतनिया प्रभु नित्यनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिव सदी गौर भक्त जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 
राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जाय राधा कुंज बिहारी राधा कुंज बिहारी राधा कुंज बिहारी श्री राधे जाय राधा कुंज बिहारी राधा कुंज बिहारी राधा कुंज बिहारी श्री राधे जाय राधा गोविंद राधा गोविंद राधा गोविंद श्री राधे जय प्रभु पाय प्रभु पाय प्रभु पाय जय प्रभु पाय जय जय प्रभु पाय प्रभु पाय प्रभु पाय जय प्रभु पाय नीथाय गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो गौर हरि बो नीथाय गौर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो गौर हरि बो request everyone to bow down jai om vishnu pad paramahansa puri vidika acharya sro shri shri mat his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhu pad ki jai om vishnu pad paramahansa puri vidika acharya sro shri shri mat bhakti siddhanta saraswati go swami maharaj prabhu pad ki anant koti vaishnav brind ki nama acharya shila haridas thakur ki is gone founder acharya shila prabhu pad ki prem se kaho shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhar shiva sari gaur bhakt brind ki श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरी गोवर्धन की वृंदावन धाम की मथुरा धाम की नवद्वीप धाम की जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की गंगा माई की यमुना माई की तुलसी देवी की भक्ति देवी की जाए संकीर्तन यज्ञ की जाए बृहद मृदंग की जाए सामवेद भक्त वृंद की जाए गौर प्रेमानंदी ऑल गौर सद सैम्बल दिवोरीस ऑल गौर सद सैम्बल दिवोरीस ऑल गौर श्री श्री गुरु एंड गौरंगा